Father. And Lord, open our understanding today, Father, I pray. And Lord, have us look into the spiritual realm and look into our futures, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. And the people of God. Amen. Genesis 6, verse uh, 4. And oh my God, I need I like I need another <laughs> I need another Bible. Anybody got an English Bible on them? I really need I need a Thompson. Well, my version is horrible. I'm just telling you guys. If we go for an English version, I'm not sure what version you guys are reading. Let me see what version is. What does yours say? Because it should say Nephilim. Yours say Nephilim? Yeah. Why does the NIV say Nephilim? Where does it? Oh, it does say Nephilim. Okay. All right. Um, sh th that's the NIV? And the NIV has missing verses. Hold on, hold on. Let me see right here. The AMP. AMP. Let's check the Schofield. Because that's a good, good study Bible. And how do you catalog maybe? New Testament or Old Testament. Genesis 6, 4. And let's see if it's here. Oh, my God. All right, I guess I borrow yours, but... Uh, my Bible's right here, the sword. You could probably change the version. Yeah. Oh, to AMP. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, I don't. I got a bunch of versions. I don't have that one. Maybe the King James version. Hey, try AKJ. Try. God, you'd think the Schofield would have it. Try King James. <laughs> Embarrassing to have all these all these Bible apps and they're not. It's too basic. Um, I had the Schofield. I don't know. Book of Enoch. Spanish Bibles. App Store is right. Hold on. Okay, guys, we're downloading the app. If you have the App Store, Brittany's English Bible is better. It's called AMP. No, I need to go to the app store. If you give me a chance to go there, it's called okay. It's just called Holy Bible. Hold on, give me just stop, stop, stop touching it. All right. The app store Holy Bible, and you can pick different versions. Here's the Play Store. There, now you're ready. Is is it the King James Holy Bible? Just hit install. Install. Just install. So we're installing the Holy Bible from the app right now as we speak. Uh, Holy Bible U version Bible app. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Theron, can you leave this in the office? All right. That's okay. Uh, yeah, that looks like the one. Yeah. yeah. U version Bible app, Holy Bible. And then he says AMP. She's downloading AMP from there. 
So you don't have an AMP. What's going on? I'm used to the, La Biblia de las Americas, so I'll tell you, Spanish. This is a good book. That I know of, guys, the Thompson is really good also. Advanced technology, our youth. Yeah. 6-4. All right. There we go. Thank you. Thank God for the new generation. All right. Hopefully you guys will take over soon. <laughs> Amen. My my plan is to go with Darren and verify that everything is real. <laughs> right? You ready? Yep. All right. Peru, here we come. Machu Picchu. That's that's the plan, brother. <laughs> Amen. Uh Genesis 6 4 and uh go ahead and go to the next picture, second picture up there. Let's go to that second picture up there. Now, Genesis 6, 4 says right here, there were Nephilim of stature, there were uh, uh, notorious men on the earth in those days, and also when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they gave birth to their children, uh, these were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown, of great reputation. Okay, so we're discussing the existence of giants. In the Bible, and what we're saying is the Bible. The Bible is what we call the canon. There are other bi books that exist in history that are pretty valid, but the Bible was the one scrutinized by the Jewish people, where they literally took out a bunch of other stuff, and they said this is the canon. This is the primary book. Okay, so the 66 books we look at it as the canon. We look at it as the official word of God. And so in this Bible, it discusses giants existing, okay? And that's what we're talking about. We don't believe in fables. People change stories. They make stuff up. Uh, a lot of times fables, uh, stories are made up. They're from, they, they get changed from generation to generation. They get, um, as we say, exaggerated, okay? But a lot of times stories like Gilgamesh come from the truth, okay? So these are stories of the truth of people in a time when giants existed on the earth before the flood, okay? And they were discussing that in the mountains of Arat or the highest mountains in the world, there's evidence of fish and fish scales and sea life up in those mountains, okay? So the, the proof that the flood happened in the whole entire world, what more proof do you need when you find fishes on top of the highest mountains in the world, okay? That's your proof. And obviously it's going to be up there because it's really cold. You know, it's preserved, as they would say. So the evidence of sea life on, th on the highest mountains of the world show that the flood was real, guys. Okay? How many years, it, what, what's debatable is how many millions of years all this has been going on. That's the part that is debatable. But when we talk about the area of order, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a certain order and these are called the ancient days. So they said here, from the time of Jared. So when the fall of humanity happened, now let's just think about this logically. Let's say one of the scientific things that I heard, okay, is that the axis has been moved, all right? So what happens here is maybe if, if the axis of the earth was in a perfect position, we'd be in eternity right now. Just something to think about because we're living in time, okay? And so what the Bible says is in the last days, time will get shorter. So what's going on is the axis has moved, 
all right? Whatever made the axis move. Maybe the meteor hit the Gulf of Mexico and moved the whole entire axis, guys. You know, the, 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 the dinosaurs got destroyed, whatever. It got turned out of whack. Time increased, okay? And now we have a shorter lifespan. So God said there will only be 120 years of life of man. Prior to the fall of sin, we lived longer. So we're just talking about certain understanding here on what kind of events happen on earth, what kind of things change the earth, you know, that are very real and that could happen today and what has happened in the past. So we're reading about the giants and the Bible says in, I think it's Genesis 5.18, let's go there. When did the giants come on the earth? So the Nephilim were, were these beings, and we're going to get into this issue, um, Genesis 5, and I think it's verse 18. And so we get there. So Jared came into being. Jared is the sixth generation from Adam, okay? So Jared, his name means descending, as in coming down from heaven, okay? So they literally saw these beings coming down from heaven. Uh, people in the world and believers, Christians, we kind of translate the things different. And so what happens is we all see the same thing, but we're going to give it a name according to our people, okay? So one, one race of people will call it Nephilim. The other uh, race called them Rephadim, okay? And another race called them Emim. So everybody gave a different name to the giants. They all saw them, what was going on. This is, this is what happened, all right? So we're just talking about history. So Jared is the sixth from Adam, and... Since the fall of man, people back then would live longer because sin barely started, the corruption on the earth, okay? So it's like unplugging a light bulb that's fully charged, you know? Have you ever seen those light bulbs that are, that are like self-charging, whatever? Sometimes you unplug them and slowly they go dim, okay? So we're, dis we're discussing a, a slow discharge, all right? So the explanation of people coming out of eternity, living forever, and then dying because of sin... They didn't die immediately. They lived 900 years. They lived 1,000 years. I think the Sumerian text actually talks about a ridiculous amount of years, like 240,000 years. I don't know. You're the teacher. You ever read the Sumerian text on that? Okay. Right. And that's just the Bible, 960 years. But there's the Sumerian text when they talk about the original kings, and they lived a, a very long time. Okay, so now we're going back to the Sumerian text. We're going back to them saying that there were kings that existed that lived a long time. But it seems logical to me that Adam and Eve came out of eternity, right? They had to live a long time before they died. Okay, and then each generation got shorter. So we read in the Bible, I think Noah lived 800 or 900 years, Noah. His dad lived 900 years, then he lived 800, then 7, and then you see 350, and then it keeps going down. Well, you see that discharge from generation to generation, it kind of makes sense. It's like, okay, the sin is taking over little by little. Amen? So that's what the Bible explains. So the, the Bible explains coming out of eternity, and now I'm explaining to you, and so we get to the sixth generation, which is Jared. Jared means descending, and they see the Nephilim produced from the fallen angels sleeping with women. Now, you can see how women tend to get men into trouble. Not only men, but men of other, men of other planets <laughs> in, the, in the power of seduction, right? And so what happens is when they, when they explain this, just so you guys know, like um, Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, the angels appear and the men want to sleep with them, all right? These are the angels. So there are different types of angels. There are different levels of heaven, okay? And there's different levels of hell. And this is even Jesus, when he's preaching, he says, he says for as much as you denied the truth, you're going to go to a greater hell, than, than those from Nineveh. So Jesus is actually preaching, and he says, you're going to go to bigger torment. This is Jesus. So there's different levels of hell, and there's different levels of heaven. And this is important 
and understanding, okay? So my understanding of this is that here, here the fallen angels come, but they're not from the highest level of heaven. They're watchers, okay? They sleep with the women, and Enoch intercedes for them. And he says, he, he prays for them. He intercedes. Enoch is, is born on the family, I believe, of Seth, okay? So you had Cain and Abel, and you had Seth. Obviously, Cain kills Abel. There's no descendants. Seth is born. He has children, and out of those children are Noah and so forth. So we're looking at the, the certain people that are born, um, and Enoch is one of them. So Enoch is what we call the Old Testament the Old Testament prophet, the Gentile prophet. So he's the, the, the servant of God before the law, before Moses, okay, before a lot of things came into existence, Enoch was a prophet of God. So Enoch was a Gentile prophet. He's there. He's in the Bible. I don't know if he's the eighth or the tenth generation around there, okay? This is what we're discussing. So Enoch is born out of them, and he's interceding for the giants, Okay, and God pronounces the flood. He says, I, I know how we're going to kill these giants. We're going to flood the whole entire world for a while. All right, we're going to drown them because their parents, listen, their parents, they live in the eternity. They can't die, but the children can die. I'm explaining this to you. Amen, because the children are half and half. So the children slept with the women. These are the children. They're children of eternity and children of uh, humanity here on the earth okay amen so God puts a plan to destroy the giants now when you look at this Egyptian uh, hieroglyph hieroglyph you see what a giant and you see little people what serving the giant okay now this is the interesting part there are actual giant footsteps everywhere in different parts of the world and if they can't explain it you know they exist so these giants left their footprints in rocks. They left them in temples. They left them, there's one here in California. And, and this is, these are the things that we're looking at. Did giants exist? Yes. Is that in the Bible? Yes. Okay, so we're having the discussion whether giants existed. Um, 1 Samuel 17, 25 says that Goliath was a giant. He was a, the descendant of giants. And... Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel 21, 19. 2 Samuel 21, 19. Next uh, picture, please. So you have all these hieroglyphs of giants existing and uh, serving little people. Now, here's the thing. So the flood comes. We don't know how long the world was flooded. But you can imagine in your mind, there are 20-foot giants, there are 30-foot giants. They can't swim, you know. Their newer generations are smaller, okay. So some of them survive. Some of them make it through. But the original giants drowned. And, and, and the book of Enoch explains that God captured the rebellious angels. So he went and he captured them. And he chained them God knows where, okay. They can't die. So these are the ones that taught men about women, about makeup, that taught sorcery, that taught astrology, you know. And when we look at the Egyptian temples, how, how in the world do you go 3,000, 4,000 uh, years back and say that these people were morons when they construct a, a, a temple in, in the form of pi, which is a mathematical formula to perfection? So when we look at the positions of their temples, they were lined up with the stars. They were mathematically perfect. These people were not morons. Somebody taught them astrology. Somebody taught them these things, okay? And so the book of Enoch explains the fallen angels, the watchers, taught these people these things, okay? So we're getting a little bit of an explanation. So go on to the next picture. Next picture. Genesis 5.16. So here we have in the Mayan temples. I love to go down to, to visit Mayan uh, temples and stuff like that. I want to go see this one. It says, uh, you see the picture here? This is in, a, I think, a Mayan temple. And you see a guy, and he looks like he's driving a rocket ship, guys. Uh, right? He looks like he's driving a spaceship. That's what it looks like. And they actually have in the Mayan culture, they have a guy who looks like he has a space helmet on. 
He has the plug and everything, you know. So he's in a spacesuit. So when you look at it, this is a depiction of a rocket, guys. All right? Yeah, obviously, it's a depiction of a rocket. Okay? So who were the watchers? Uh, the watchers were the aliens. Who are the aliens? Aliens simply means extraterrestrial, not from this earth. Okay? So when we think of an angel, it's the same thing. Not created from this earth. A creation from what? Somewhere else. Amen? So that's extraterrestrial, and, that's, and this is terrestrial. We're explaining it, okay? So there, we're both in agreement about aliens and angels are the same thing. All right. So we go back right here, and we said, uh, Los atalayas de Dios, Los Ángeles comenzaron a tener relaciones con las mujeres. All right. Next picture. And we talked about the Sumerians. You got to look up the Sumerians, guys. And they talk about the time of the kings. I put pictures up there about the time frame, uh, about the evidence that they find. Next picture. So there's some evidence that was listed. When they were able to translate the Sumerian text, that's the evidence that came up. This guy ruled for 28,000 years. This guy ruled for 36,000 years. This guy ruled for 43,000 years. And so uh, there you go. All right, uh, so you see that they were probably from a higher generation before the sin was more corrupt. This is the, the logic. Because if I'm a surviving child and you teach me, I'm going to take what you know and I'm going to apply that knowledge, you know, or at least I'm going to tell stories about it. Hey, you know, there was a time when the giants existed, you know, and they built temples to who? To the giants, okay? Who had the technology? You know, go to the next picture. Okay, so that's just more, more reigns, kingdom reigns, 900 years, 870 years. And as you can see, it starts going down. So first it was 43,000, 28,000, 36,000. It starts going down 900, 800, 400 years reign, 200 years reign, 628 years. So you see right there, th this is an actual history tablet of them putting down how many years the kings lived. Okay, well, why would somebody make that up, you know? This is in their text. This is the way they left their text. They left it in stone. Next picture. Uh, that's just a picture of a skeleton they found of a giant in Thailand. Uh, when you start researching this, they find, they find uh, skeletons. Interestingly enough, these discoveries started in the 1900s, and the S Smithsonian would take uh, skeletons, and somehow they disappeared. They just disappear. So they would hide this evidence. Now, if I'm trying to teach people you descended from an ape, I'm going to hide this stuff. You know, I'm going to hide it because I don't want proof of what I believe in to come out. And then you know the truth. Okay. So just a little, little discussion about that. Uh, go, go to the next one. Next picture. Is that all the pictures? There should be more pictures. Oh, that's great. Okay, so that means you downloaded the wrong, the wrong file. Can we get the other file out here? Because I just want to show them the, the feet of the giants real quick, like five frames. Do you want to just take it or... Now, well, while we're reading that, just, just to go over the Bible, uh, 1 Samuel 17 says, um, Goliath was a giant. Um, which, which, which chapter did I tell you guys right now? Did I tell you that one? Okay, 2 Samuel 21, 15. Let's go there. 2 Samuel 21, 15. The Philistines were at war with David, and they, 
And they, they went down to fight with David. They fought against the Philistines. Then David became tired. Then Ishi Benob, who was among the descendants of the giants, whose weight of whose spear was 300 shekels, six pounds of bronze, was armed with a new sword. So we kind of have an ideal, just so you guys know. Interestingly enough, when they find the skeletons of the giants, that it was actually head axes of bronze. Let me repeat. They were using weapons. They were head axes. So they had e head axes made of bronze. So it is believed that this was the, the time of the bronze age. Just explaining that to you. So interestingly enough, when they try and find King David, they can't find King David. So, so, so supposedly the world says, well, King David didn't exist. But now we have a discrepancy in the time. Okay? And the discrepancy in the time is telling me this guy was from the Bronze Age. So David was from the Bronze Age, which takes it way back further than what the Bible is telling us. Okay? Just a little explanation. So they were using weapons of bronze. That's what they were using. So they were fighting uh, with bronze weapons. Okay? Which is interesting. So we look here and it says six pound sword. Um, did we get the other one up there yet, guys? I think he's looking right now. And it says here, so that this giant, Abishai, he goes to try and kill him. And, but Abishai comes and saves David and kills the giant. Okay, so this is a, another giant, the descendants of giants. Now, I think it's Deuteronomy 1 or 2. But when we're looking in Joshua, and Joshua's coming into the promised land. Oh, no, excuse me, that would be Moses. When Moses is leading, leading uh, Egypt and he crosses the Red Sea, uh, the Bible says that he and Joshua confront the King Og. And King Og is one of the original descendants of the giants. So here's a king that is like super tall and they kill him. Okay. All right. Good. We got the pictures up here. All right. So this is an actual temple in Syria. Guys, if you guys want to go, I want to go, you know. So this is Syria. They found an actual old temple buried in the sand. So when they find these old temples, temples, um, they, they obviously they excavate them and they take them out. This is the interesting thing. These feet are actually in the center of the whole temple. So you have two columns and stuff, and you got these two giant feet here and one giant foot going forward. We're going to take a look at that. Where are they located? In the center of the temple. Okay? All right? And I think of Hollywood stars. You know, people put their prints on cement just to let you know, hey, I was here. You know? So I'm kind of thinking that these are real deal feet that you're looking at. So the archaeologists can explain why these giant feet are here. And they found this temple in Syria since 1955. Now, if this stuff was so fake and phony, why does the government go out of their way to cover up the existence of giants? You know, these, this is the feet of the giants have been found everywhere throughout the world, even here in California. All right, let's go to the next picture. So there it is. So that's the temple, that's the archaeological feet, and that's one step forward, okay? And they said something like, this person would have to be 30 feet tall, you know? So you put your foot in that, and you get an idea. This is a temple in Syria, you know? So I want to go there. Uh, next one. So we see the man's foot next to another imprint right there, okay? You have an idea of the difference. All right, uh, Pie de Gigante, all right, um, footprints of the Ayan Dara Temple, there you go, side by side. Next picture, all right, in 2002, James Snyder discovered a giant fossil footprint embedded in a billion-year-old granite, don't believe that, uh, in California, Cleveland National Forest. Guys, yesterday I rode my, my motorcycle through the California Cleveland National Forest which is somewhere in between Lake Elsinore and the 5 Freeway down towards San Diego. Interestingly enough, it's 465,000 acres. So I don't think it's going to be easy to find, but I, I'm telling you guys, I'm going to look for it. So this guy found, look at a footprint of a giant right here in Cleveland National Forest. 
I said, cool, I want to go check that thing out. Amen. But they're not publicizing where, where he found it. Interestingly enough, it's not going to be easy to find. So that's Cleveland National Forest right here in California. The second picture you're looking at, I believe, is Italy. Oh, okay, Valencia, Spain. So that's a footprint of somebody, and it looks like a sandal, guys. That doesn't look like a regular footprint. It looks like a sandal. So that's Valencia, Spain, and there's another footprint of another giant. Next picture. Now, those people who are scientists actually say that the imprint from this foot, which is South Africa, was made in the time when that rock was like mud. And they say that the foot is lifting up, leaving those imprint marks the way it would normally do if you were walking through mud, which is crazy. So the scientists say that this foot, literally someone stepped in it, and then they lifted it up, and that was the mud that was left from a foot imprint from somebody actually walking on that rock. How many millions of years ago could that be? Now, for those of us who know, the, the earth is moving, the rocks move, everything moves, everything changes over time. So maybe we're talking millions of years back. This is in South Africa. They found this one. The guy found it in 1912. This is not the guy from 1912. It's a more modern picture. Somebody came and took a picture, you know, because uh, it's still there. All right, next picture. This is a foot in Russia, guys. Booyah. Guy, maybe he kicked the rock, right? He's like, dude, I'll show you. You know? And here's a photo of a giant human footprint found in Russia near Levowski. And, I, and it says here, this is the photo. Uh, this photo says a thousand words. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that looks like a foot to me. All right? Someone left their print in China. This is China, okay? And there's your footprint. And wow, how tall was that guy, right? You got to wonder. Next picture. In Kansas, uh, USA, near Baxter Springs, 44 inches long, 21 inches wide. There's a human footprint found in the sandstone. Some think it might be fake, uh, but we doubt it. Okay. In recent years, supernized human footprints have been found in Spain, in Sri Lanka, Paraguay, Bangalore, Botswana, Texas, USA, Australia, Thailand, Canada, New Mexico, Russia, Alaska, Syria, Belize, and Cleveland, USA. All right. So we see the picture here. They found that one in Kansas. Booyah, they found it. Next one, next one. All right. So this is a picture from Texas. This is the one from Texas. So they found this, these imprints in Texas of feet. You can see the guy's feet. You can see those feet. It says, giant footprints found near the riverbed of Glen Rose, Texas in the 1950s. Similar giant footprints have been found in Arizona. Uh, and it says here, uh -huh, near Mount Whitney. Um, Pastora wants to go up Mount Whitney. I don't know if anybody wants to go with us, but I I'm saying, girl, you know, I don't know. That's a real challenge because it's the biggest mountain in California. You ever look it up, Mount Whitney, that looks kind of crazy uh, to go up. Kind of dangerous, you know, but you would imagine you say, OK, we're going to explain a little bit about that. But but why would the giants go to mountains and caves? Uh, OK, they're descendants of the giants. And so when you look up these stories, the Indians here in America actually talked about giants and giants and caves. OK, and when we think about the history, what the what the book of Enoch says is that the the giants turned on each other. Number one. And number two there was a problem with food, obviously, right? Because they're giants. So when they ran out of food, guess who they started eating? Guess who they started eating? Us. <laughs> Us, all right? And then that becomes, as they say, war. You know, people are going to fight back. People are going to start killing giants. That's what's going to happen. But they would worship the giants, OK, so interestingly enough, guys, you know, you sit here and you say, OK, the Mexico temple, the God in the in the sun. Right. And we're worshiping the gods and we're worshiping fallen angels. Listen. And now why would somebody kill somebody, pull out their heart? And you're thinking that's not logical. Wait a minute. It is logical. Way back when giants existed 
and they had to give human sacrifices to them. Uh, right? Doesn't that make sense? So it's like, okay, for the, in order to save the many, let's just donate the few. All right. So now we get into human sacrifice to the gods. So the Greek mythology, a lot of it is truth. You know, amen? A lot of it is truth. But it, how has that truth changed over time? All right? Amen. And what, what is it that makes sense right here? Next picture. Next. Is that the last picture? Okay, so that's the original one from 1912 from South Africa. Next picture. Okay, so this footprint was found in a volcano in Italy. and it, So it was a planted footprint in Italy. I don't know, a giant decided to walk up to the volcano. There you go. So there's a footprint on the volcano in Italy. All right? That dates back 325,000 years. <laughs> All right, there we go. 325,000 years, a giant decided to walk up the mountain of Italy. Boom. Next picture. This footprint is, uh, I believe it's China. So we look at the print. There's your footprint right here. And it, what does it say? Uh, located in 2016, they discovered a giant footprint left fossilized in Pengyan Village in China, southwestern province of Guzhou. It was located in amateur photographers took a picture of this imprint in China. Next picture. And that's it. Go ahead and take it off. All right, so we'll go ahead and get the lights right here. Uh, 2 Samuel 21, 19, let's go there. 21, and we're in there, verse 19. And after there was war again with the Philistines at the same time, uh, at that same time, Sibikai the Hushtite killed Sipi who was among the descendants of the giants, okay? Among the descendants of the giants. So we had Ish Benab, we had Sippi, all right? And there was war with the Philistines. And again at Gob, Elhanah, the son of Gerar or Rim, a Bethlehemite, killed Goliath, the Gittite, whose spear was shaft was like the weaver's beam, okay? The man was of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes, 24 in number, and, and he was a descendant of the giants, all right? Um, and I believe that's also in First Chronicles um, 20, verse 4. Let's go there. First Chronicles 20, verse 4. Now, it came about that after this war broke out at Jerzar the Philistines, then Sibachai the Hushnite killed Sippi, one of the descendants of the giants that was subdued. Okay? There was war again with the Philistines. And then Elhanah, the son of Jer, killed Lahmi, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, whose, sha whose shaft beam was like a weaver's beam. Again, there was war, and there was a man of great stature who had 24 fingers, six fingers on each hand, six toes, and he was a descendant of the giants, all right? And when taunted Israel, when he taunted I Israel, Jonathan, son of Shimei, David's brother, killed him. And there were descendants from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David, by the hand of his servants. Amen. Uh, by the time they got down to these, these giants, they were uh, almost nine foot, so they were eight foot something. They were no longer as tall as they were originally in, th in these biblical times when they killed the giants, okay? And so we get down to uh, our Bible verse, which is uh, Ephesians 6, 10. Let's go there. Ephesians 6, 10. Now, we're talking about giants today, and there are other things that exist. Um, so Machu Picchu is, is a fortress in Peru that they cannot explain today how the rocks are cut. It looks like they were cut with lasers. They had to be cut with diamonds, and they didn't have the technology back then, and they don't have the technology today to lift the rocks, okay? 
So they talk about the perfection in the cuts, the perfection in, the, in these fortresses in Peru. And they say, well, we don't have the technology today to, to build a fortress of rocks, okay? Temples. And there are other temples, I, I, I'll have to look up the name, that they cannot explain how they were built. I believe they're down in India. They were literally carved out of the rock and out of the mountain. And they said, we, we, we have no explanation how this thing was built. Okay, so we get here. Uh, what Bible verse are we on, guys? Okay, so we're in Ephesians 6.10. Uh, go ahead and read it for me, Brittany. Okay, all right. So let so the Bible says you war not against flesh and blood, all right? Now, this is where we get into the explanation of why we're talking about giants, okay? Literally, the book of Enoch says, for as much as these people, these beings that were created, were from women from the earth and from fallen angels, the, the Bible says that when they die, their souls will be trapped here. And they will be called evil spirits. Okay. So the Bible says we fight, we war not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, and powers of darkness. Okay. And the Bible says against evil spirits. Evil what? Evil spirits. Pastor, what are the evil spirits? Uh, they are the giants. They're still here on earth. So when we die, our soul goes to hell or to heaven. We are created in the image of God. But here is a being that is not created in the image of God. This being is half angel and half humanity. So their soul, their spirit, is literally roaming around on the earth right now. All right? Amen. They can't go to heaven because they're not fully hum humanity. All right? They're not going to hell. They're trapped right here on earth. Uh, are you guys hearing me? So these are what they call the evil spirits. So the evil spirits, the Bible says, God said, for as much as you love these children, I will, I will call them evil spirits. Their souls will be trapped here until judgment day. Until when? Until judgment day. Okay. So Jesus comes. Listen. Jesus comes and there's a man possessed by evil spirits. All right. And, and he comes and the man is what? The Bible says he's naked. He breaks chains. And he's hanging out at the tombs. All right. So logical people, non-spiritual people. Let me, let me be blunt with you guys. There are people that are born who are non-spiritual. They don't believe in anything. The good fairy, the cat, the cat, they've never saw a ghost. They've never saw, I'm, I'm explaining this to you. So a non-believer is, is really someone who's not spiritual. And you have, in humanity, you have people that are non-spiritual, and then you have people that are spiritual. Okay? I'm just explaining this to you. So there are people that are spiritual, and there are people that are non-spiritual. It doesn't matter whether you're good or bad. Call it witchcraft. Call it uh, Holy Spirit movement, you know, but it's the same thing. It's just people that are spiritual and people that are non-spiritual. People that are spiritual see. They perceive things in the spiritual realm. People that are non-spiritual will never see anything. They don't believe in anything, okay? We don't waste our breath with those people because they just don't believe in anything, okay? So you get doubters and you get believers, all right? So then when we go into the question of who gets possessed, um, my understanding would be someone with a weak soul. So I haven't got to the degree of understanding how people get demon-possessed. But if you've ever seen someone demon-possessed, their eyes change. They don't look normal. They look crazy. Okay? And you say, that person looks crazy. I'm getting away from that person. That's someone who's demon-possessed. 
All right? Who do I say that, that me growing up, it is the weak people in the soul and the spirit. For whatever reason, they're easy to influence. So these are people that are really weak in their soul. And they're easy to be possessed. Could be, but I've always noticed they're like the weakest souls. They're just weak in their soul, in their mind. The, the mind is the battlefield, guys. Just so you guys know, the mind is the battlefield. The mind is your soul, okay? Your spirit is the life force. When you die, it goes back to God. Your mind is your soul, your existence, your being, all right? Can people have out-of-body experiences? The answer is yes. Yes, you can, you know? Those things happen. Are people spiritual? Yes, yes. Are people non-spiritual? So Jesus comes, the man is possessed by demons, and, and, he, and he casts the demon out. And he says, what's your name? And he says, my name is Legion, for we are many. All right? So he comes out and he says, my name is Legion, for we are many. And, and, and so the Bible says, he says, you know, don't send us to the abyss. Send us somewhere else. So Jesus says, okay, I'm not going to send you to the abyss which is in Revelations. We're not going to get into that today because that is another story, all right? And he says, he sends them to the pigs. And the Bible says that these evil spirits enter 2,000 pigs, and then they go and they run into the water and they kill themselves. How many pigs? 2,000. 2,000 evil spirits in one man. All right? So now we get into this chakra deal, and it's like you can have chakra, you can have superpower. No, chakra is baloney. Chakra is not superpower. It's demon possession, guys. It's an evil spirit in a person which has extraordinary power. Because you sit here and say, I don't have extraordinary power. How in the heck can I get extraordinary power? Well, if you invite a spirit into your body, then you can have extraordinary power. Crazy enough, all right? So when we explain the Bible, well, he says, oh, he ripped the chains. You know, he ripped the chains. They, they couldn't subdue him. He got, he got what? He got what? He got naked. He got what? He got naked. Okay. So the Bible says that these spirits are still here. They feel passion uncontrolled, okay? So they want to have sex. They want to kill people. They lust after food. They still have the same passions, but they have no body. So here's these beings. They have the same passions. They have no body. What do they do? What do you think they do? They possess bodies. It's called demon possession. So here the children of God come, and they get excited, and they say, Luke 9 and Luke 10, they said, we cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Amen. They say, we, we what? We cast out demons. So the believer in Christ has the power and authority to cast out demons. Amen. So there's a rank of fallen angels. There's evil spirits. And who has the authority to cast them out? The believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So I'm telling you a story. So here we get into the question of whether, whether someone is possessed by a demon, yes or no. Is it, is it an uh, educational ailment? Is it an illness? Is it a lack of education? Is it possession? Is it demonic? Okay, so, so the, the, explanation, the explanation of that is someone who is not a believer can be possessed, okay? But someone who is a believer cannot be possessed, but can be oppressed. 
All right? That would be the understanding. They could be oppressed. And the Bible says that there was a, that Jesus said once again he found a lady. She had a curved back, you know, and she was there in torment in church. And Jesus came along and he said, on, on the day of rest, which is Saturday, okay, in case you know, in case you didn't know, Sunday is a Catholic day. Sunday is not the day of rest. The day of rest biblically is Saturday with the Hebrew calendar, all right? So we don't follow Catholicism. And if someone asked, okay, are the Catholics Christians? The answer is no, they're not Christians. They persecuted and killed Christians. They threw them to the lions, guys. People in Spain hate Christians. You can't go there and open a church, all right? They will kill you. They will kick your butt. You talk Christianity over in Spain, you're in trouble, okay? So there's a difference between a Catholic and a Christian. But we have a lot of passive Christians who live in Disneyland who don't want to know about the deep stuff about God, all right? Amen. And that's all fine. You can live in your own world until bad things happen, and then you call me, all right? Amen. But those are the things that we look at. We look at where things originated from, why they originated from. And we can get into Catholicism another day. Catholicism is not Christianity. This is not the calendar of God. This is the Gregorian calendar, which is Roman Catholic. Rome never died. Rome is a country that has existed today. It's just called something else. I think it's called a Antiopolis. I forget the, the name. But it's still Rome. Rome never died, which is another story, okay? Um, amen. So today's discussion was on giants, on the existence of giants. And I, I want to be clear with you guys. I believe it's real. It's in the Bible. And I'm explaining to you why we fight with evil spirits. Possession. Demonic possession. Okay? Where does the evil spirit come from? A fallen giant. A giant that existed, okay, who are looking to possess people until the day of judgment, all right, amen. So if you ever see someone demonically possessed, if you don't have authority in the name of Jesus Christ, just run or give me a call, but don't stick around, all right, don't, when you see someone cray cray and yeah, you just run, you leave, all right. We did have one sister in this church, she ran. She was, a, she was a daughter of a sister, and someone who was demonically possessed literally tried to kill her. That's no joke. Had a knife out and everything, chasing her, trying to kill her, all right? Amen. I, before I became a Christian, when I was a teenager, we were playing the Ouija and stuff like that, smoking weed, hanging out, you know, and the, and the lying spirit, which is the evil spirit, said, I'm the dead ghost of so-and-so, and we're going to take vengeance on the other gang, but invite me in. And so the girl in our gang, she says, yeah, come on in. And she, she had a messed up eye. And I'm not kidding you. This is a true story. She had a messed up eye. We'd hang out, smoke weed, drink, whatever. And she invites the spirit in her. And all of a sudden, I kid you not, she takes off her glasses. She looks at me and she smiles. And her eye that was messed up, straight. And she looks at me with an evil grin. And I'm thinking, oh, freaking A. Why did this girl invite this evil spirit in her? That's what she did. All right? And, yeah, we freaked out. We ran out. But this one girl, she says, oh, I'm brave. Let's go back to the Ouija room. You know, the door's moving and stuff like that. And she's like, I'm going to go back in. And we're like, don't go back in that house. And the girl, I kid you not, she goes back in. And I'm watching her walk into the living room. And I saw, like, a hand pick her up and throw her about eight feet. This was before I was a Christian. I was a teenager, 16, 17. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah, all right? And I said, oh, there's something there. So they would lie and say, we're ghosts of dead people. No, regular human beings, when they die, they either go to heaven or they go to hell. There's no in-between, all right? So these super powerful spirits, obviously, where does their strength come from? If it's the spirit of someone that was 20 feet tall, whatever, they got a lot of muscle power, baby. All right? So that's what it is. It's an evil spirit. I'm explaining to you. So the Bible tells you, you're not fighting against human beings. You're spiritual warfare. So you have to discern what's moving. All right? Why is this important? Because you have to see what's moving. If you see, if you walk into a household and you feel violence, leave. 
leave. Those little alarms go off, okay? There's alarms in your body that tell you it's a wrong atmosphere. This is a wrong environment. And when you feel that, I'm out. You said you want to say something? Or was it Brittany? They do recognize, yes, they recognize spiritual authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yamani is a person that grew up with her all her life since we know her since elementary. She's not a Christian. So, you know, but she's cool. We love her. You know. Yeah, yeah. We talk about we talk about spirituality in general. Fearful people doubting people, they're non spiritual. Think of it that way. And very spiritual people, they don't have to be Christians. There are plenty of very spiritual people. So you're gonna either meet one or the other. You're not really going to meet in between. And fearful people, they don't want to hear about this stuff. They don't want to recognize the spiritual realm. They're just like, please don't tell me about this anymore, you know. They get all scared, you know. But when you see crazy stuff happen, like, for example, I'll go to Vegas. I went to Vegas. I was with Pastora. We don't tell anybody we're pastors, you know. We're cruising the street in Vegas. This demon-possessed guy with tracks comes to us, you know, and he says, you know, I go to church too, you know. I, I go to Catholic Mass, too. And I'm like, what? And you can see he was all demon-possessed. He came to chasing behind us. <laughs> you know? And said, yeah, devil, we know you go to church. We're ready to rebuke you. We're ready to cast you out. I said, you calling me out right here in Vegas? No problem. I, I'll, li- I'll deliver you right here in the street. And get a bunch of people going, what? So when we talk about oppression and possession, amen, exist, yes. Are there demonic influences? Yes. Okay. And it's important for you guys to discern. All right. So when you discern wickedness, you walk away. Or you call backup. That's what we're here for. Amen. But we're trying to discern what's going on. Amen. So today we talked about giants. And that's your class from the Bible. Amen. And you guys have a blessed day. Thank you, guys.